They're going to speak for a few minutes. And you want to stand up so you can hear us? Yeah. You're going to have to excuse me. I have a cough drop in my mouth, so if this thing flies out, you know. <laughs> <laughs> my name is Joe Graham. Uh, I'm the president of UAW at Lordstown. Been there since 1968. Love the plant. Love the people out there. Uh, I decided to run from there. I guess there was one issue that just put me over the top. I was coming up Park Avenue, quarter to 11 in the morning, and there was a hooker standing on the corner of Washington and Park Avenue. Now, I remember what our city used to be. I'm sure you do. A lot of you do. We used to be known as the Festival City of Ohio. <clears throat> we can't get back to that magic that we had back in the 70s and the early 60s because a lot of our tax base, our revenues, have been depleted with, with the closing of some of the factories, uh, a lot of the factories. But I think if you bring the city back together, and I heard Mary mention the arts, which is an important, very important piece of this puzzle, the business community, the schools, the neighborhood groups, we have templates that have been used in Indianapolis and in Mentor, Ohio. Medina, I'm sorry, Medina, Ohio. We have a Pogemeyer study that we paid $180,000 for, and it's been sitting on a shelf for two years. Now, I know Doug, and I, I, Doug is a friend of mine. Doug works at, <coughs> Doug's from General Motors. Doug was one of my benefits reps, and Doug and I have known each other for a long time. But I, I just I just think we can do better. I don't think I know we can do better. All we have to do is bring our city back together, and there are four or five elements that you have to bring back together, because that's the only way you're going you're to have a resurgence in our city, a rebirth. We used to be an all-American city in Warren, Ohio. That's what we were, an all-American city. We've lost some of that swagger. I feel that I can bring the community back together because it's not about a black or white issue. It's not about a Republican or Democrat issue. It's about the city. You know, we can fight about the president and the vice president when they're up for elections. Today it's about the city, the survival of our city. That's why I decided to run. I've been here my entire life. My wife, Eugenia, I, I graduated from the Warren City School System, <coughs> graduated from Youngstown State with a major in, in, in management, minor in economics. I have a son, Jimmy, my, my number one grandson, comes to all the debates, and uh, I, I love having him out there. We're here. We are residents of Warren, Ohio, and I want to keep my grandsons here and my family here. You have to bring jobs back. That's how you do it. Thank you. Um, I want to just say something that at our last debate, when I was giving my clothes, you got a great family. I heard your, your grandson yawning as I was giving my clothes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't know if anybody else heard it, but I heard it. I, 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 I trained the world. Yeah, you did. You did, you did. Thank, but first of all, thanks for uh, inviting both of us here. And thanks for all of you coming out, because I think it says more about you than us. Uh, this election is about you, not us. But I'd like to thank the, I don't want to call you Nuna, uh, the Neighborhood Association for, for putting this on. It's important. It's important for our city. Um, I'm running pr pretty much for the same reason. I love this city. I worked for 26 years out at General Motors. Uh, Jim did appoint me as a benefits rep. I'm thankful for that. Um, but. I think we both care for this city. We have a lot to offer, and I pledge to you tonight, regardless of the outcome of this election, Doug Franklin will still be working with neighborhood associations, which I've been doing for 20 years. When I see Evelyn and Mary, I remember a few years ago being in your backyards talking about some of the safety issues and the blight issues. Uh, we haven't solved all of them, but I think together we can solve anything. So that's what I want to do, accomplish as mayor. I'm very honored, let me say this, I'm very honored to have served in uh, public service for 20-something years. And I, I really feel blessed because I'm, I've been afforded the opportunity to do what I love. 
Uh, on those Saturday mornings when I could sleep in and there's a neighborhood cleanup, I usually get out and I'll be there on the 16th and try to do, uh, participate with the community. I think that's very important for any mayor to lead by example. I've had the opportunity to work with three mayors. I actually work with two and work for a third. But, but I want to assure you, if I'm elected mayor, it'll be Doug Franklin's administration. I've learned from all of them. But I think I've learned their strengths and weaknesses, but I want to take their strengths and incorporate it on my vision for what I want the city to do. So I want to thank every, you, every one of you for coming out and particularly for inviting us here to let us talk. And God bless you all. Thank you. Okay, uh, let's start way at anybody in the back there. Any questions? <coughs> what time's lunch? Okay. <laughs> okay, we'll just throw it up then. Any, okay, good. Or suggestions. Okay. Uh, let, I'm going to go call Karen first. There we go. She's behind you. We'll work on Mr. Yeah. Brian. Um, yes. If you are elected mayor, what do you plan to do differently than this administration has done? I'm sure you've thought about this. Oh, yes. Yeah. But one of, one of my first priorities is going to be, obviously, I want to be more involved in issues with our, I don't think there's a challenge more important facing our city uh, than our young people. Uh, so I, I say that because I've raised my family in this city as well. I was born and raised here, and I see the culture change and how it's affected our youth. So one of the things I'm going to ask the schools to let me do is to come into the school systems one day every grading period and do something called mayor time, which is going to talk about civic issues and encourage civic participation. I think that's very important. Secondly, what the other thing I'm going to do differently is I pledged in the first year in office to talk to every small business owner in the city to see how we can do a better job. I want to be a hands-on mayor, a mayor that you can talk to. I want to be accessible to everyone. Uh, as a safety service director, it's, it's totally different because you're running the day-to-day -day operations, so you don't get that opportunity. But those are two of the, the highlights that I want to accomplish as mayor. Thank you for the question. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Same. Yeah. What was the question again? I'm, I, I, what I'm sorry. Do differently? What would we do Oh, differently? Yeah. yeah. We're going to let them both respond okay. to the same question, okay. just so, yeah. Okay. I think it's imperative for, for the mayor to have the superintendent of schools as a resource and vice versa. What I would do differently, I think that leadership starts at the top and filters down. And we proved that at General Motors. Uh, you know, they everyone had us slotted to close, and we came together as a family at General Motors, not unlike Warren, Ohio, and we made a lot of good things happen. The mayor of the city is a top guy. The safety service director is the COO of the city. He runs the city from top to bottom. Under a statutory form of government, the mayor only has to be in his office once every 90 days. I don't know if you knew that. <coughs> Not this mayor. The mayor has to have full control of every department in the city. He has to absolutely know what's going on in every area of the city, every council area, every department, and the mayor should demand, not ask, demand two things, accountability, do your job, and respect <coughs> the people that pay your salary. And if the people, if, if the workers in Warren do that, and I know we have a lot of good ones, they won't even know who the mayor is. That's all I ask, two things, accountability, do your job, and number two, respect the people who are paying your salaries. Elizabeth? Um, the word uh, accountability is one of my favorite words. It's a 
accountability. I've been going uh, to council meetings off and off for quite a long time. And um, we have a lot of ordinances, laws that are already written and in place that I do not see being enforced. And a lot of it is, to me, one of the downfalls for this city. Because I know I live on the southeast side by Youngstown Road, which probably a million people have heard me say that, and I apologize. But we have so many things going on in that area that a lot of business owners are like, well, the city's not doing anything about it. We call it. It's not being done. So anyway, to me, I feel with the money situations, we have ordinances already in place. We have laws that are there. We just don't have a lot of accountability of being having that be put into focus. And uh, I would like to know how both of you feel about that and if we can maybe get something up and running with that for the accountability. So myself as a resident, I feel safe going down in my area and knowing that things are being taken care of.